What's going on guys, The Inhuman Beatdown, I'm back with another Real Thoughts. This is where I voice my extended opinions on a game that I've already completed, and today we're having a look at one that I feel is massively overdue. This is of corpse, corp, of corpse? Of corpse. Corpse Party for the PSP, otherwise known as Corpse Party, Blood Covered Repeated Fear. Gaining its title due to the fact this is technically a remake twice? So for the explanation, basically, there has never been a continued storyline in Corpse Party, save for a couple games, and ones that were scrapped. Which won't stop a future game from referencing them, but um, I digress. With this, it was remade for phones under the title of Corpse Party Blood Covered. Episodic, episodically released, and... Episodic released. Ep <laughs> speech impediment, episodically released for them. It was then ported to the PSP first at the time under the title of Corpse Party Blood Covered Repeated Fear with updated graphics and blah 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 blah. Some additional stuff, but those really aren't that important. For the West though, this was our first, I think, official Corpse Party game. You can now play a couple of the older ones. Um, and for the most part, the story stays kind of the same with a few changes or a few updates added along the way. So, again, we have kind of a game sort of like Sayana Uta where my entire analysis of the game basically just comes down to the fact that it's really a story-driven game. And for me, I personally like that. Some people may not enjoy that as much. Um, but yeah, uh, some of the stuff is... God, how do I go about this? I like some parts of it and some parts I don't, which I guess I'll go into here. Um, now, what I really like is the game is very atmospheric and where a lot of games will kind of like... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like... Uh, throw a shit ton of gore and stuff at you. Corpse Party probably helped by the fact that it was made in Japan. And in Japanese, violence is very much a no-no in their uh, culture. Or at least excessive amounts of violence is a no-no in their culture. As such, Course Party is very good at... It does kind of the opposite. Where usually the phrase in writing is show don't tell. Usually being that you don't tell that someone acts a certain way. You don't tell that someone is emotionless or depressed you show it through their actions and through the character on the reverse side here oh no we tell but don't show someone's having their fucking eye dug out with a pair of scissors oh we're gonna describe it the sound of dirt being shoveled on a coffin while you're being buried alive uh get ready to hear that and in cases like that that i feel ups it uh, like, ups the ante. While there's no CG to actually go with them, which would have made it a little bit better, just the overall fact that you can feel the tension, it becomes more terrifying because you are, in your own mind, trying to imagine this scenario coming before you. You are imagining what is happening. You are imagining what it is describing to you. And in some particular cases, that can be far worse than actually being shown what is happening. And I like that. That's one good thing Corpse Party has going for it before we get a whole bunch of confusing dilemmas later on in future games, which I won't spend too much time talking about because we're focusing on this one. This one is very rounded. It has a beginning and it has an end question mark. Uh, that'll fall under my kind of dislike category. For the most part, the story is very straightforward, kind of. Uh, occult shenanigans, ghosts, horror stories, and a very kind of... What's the word for it? Um, bittersweet ending, if you will. And that's the kind of stuff I like in this. This is kind of, kind of like the horror where it's like... You know, you've survived all this horror, but... Was it really worth surviving in the end? Did it really, really help that you survived all this? And that, in and of itself, is a different kind of horror all on its own. And I like that. 
That being said, though, some of the downsides to this is, because it's such a character-driven narrative and stuff like that, some of the characters are, frankly, boring, or at least not fleshed out. Now, I know for some of them, like, say, Morishige and Mayu, I think it is, the girl who is leaving the school uh, before the events of the story, um, or is transferring away. Now, for those characters, I know you can read some of the extra stories to get a better understanding of what's going on there. Um, to understand more of their... What's what's the word? Their, their um, relationship with the other characters. And that's okay, but... I'm not particularly one for reading sub-material to make a character's personality or uh, connections stronger. I'd rather it be detailed in the story, because as I always say, if it wasn't bother being shown in the story, it clearly wasn't important. Or at least not important enough. In some cases, I understand, rush for time and you cut some details and you want to tell them again to make it make sense, but in the grand scheme of things, it's like, that wasn't there in the regular story, so, yeah. And on that subject, anyways, a lot of the side stories that I didn't do for the playthrough also cover a lot of pretty much unknown characters. There are other students who are trapped in, uh, the school. Excuse me, a lot of the names and terminologies have all just kind of, like, left my brain. It's been a long time since I've done Corpse Party. Um... But yeah, a bunch of other random, and you can kind of piece together other things from their bodies or how they turned out based upon those, but it's all really just kind of interesting, like, oh, so that's how it happened kind of things, but nothing real reflective of like, oh my god, so that's why this all happened kind of thing. So ultimately, it's good if you're interested in it, but it doesn't add anything to the overall plot. On the notion of the overall plot, I do wish some, like I said, I do wish some characters were fleshed out better. Ayumi in particular, the entire first part with her and Kishinuma, what the fuck is his first name? Yoshiki? I don't remember. Anyways, of uh, them and her being possessed sometimes, or at least being influenced by evil spirits, I wish that was better explained. Now, from what we understand, Ayumi is into the occult stuff and other things like that, since it's her digging on, what is, uh, it's a person's thing, Naho, Naho, her blog, to find the Sachiko ritual in the first place. But a lot of the stuff, like her being possessed or her understanding of some occult things, is just kind of never mentioned, and I really wish it was. In some cases, this may just be it's expecting you to understand bits and pieces from the older games. Again, while they don't continue the plot, as a lot of them are bare basics, hey, we're trapped in the school, defeat Sachiko plotline, uh, they do hint at a lot of other things, such as Ayumi's uh, kind of occult and almost mystical witch-like question mark. I don't know the right terminology to use for that. Uh, in one of the older games as one of her endings involves using a book to try and resurrect the dead. Yeah, it just sounded real familiar now, didn't it? Something like that. There's hints in that there, and we'll get more of that as the series would progress here, but I really wish it was in this game a little bit more to flesh that out. Other characters like fucking, uh, Sachiko? Not Sachiko. Uh... Seiko, that's it. Just trying to remember fucking, uh... Naomi? Hi, I'm having trouble remembering names. Yeah, her friend, the weird one. I really wish her character was fleshed out a bit more, too. We just kind of learned that she's kind of, like, out there and a little weird, but she's totally a good friend and shit like that. And she's also, like, a good, devoted, like, uh, big sister to her family because her dad works a long time. But we really don't learn a lot about her before she ends up getting killed. I mean, we get, again, we get more of her fleshed out in the next game, but I really wish that wasn't the case. Uh, that's, that's really my only biggest gripe about this is some characters are just kind of like, eh? Like, Morishige basically 
more or less he's okay with the rest of the group, but you can tell he only really cares about Mayu. And he just kind of goes bonkers at one point. I really wish we understood more of why. I really wish that was a fleshed in thing. Morishige actually comes off as very much a red herring, if you will, in some situations where it's just like he's being super creepy and he's going to be a fucking killer or something. Oh, no, that's reserved for this rando guy who actually is a fucking killer. Or somehow, um, the teacher survived and he's a zombie now. One big thing I really wish was explained, I really really wish they would explain how Sachiko managed to gain a body and basically kick off the plot of this game. Like, with her killing the kids with the help of the kind of, like, mentally ill teacher. I really wish that was explained more. I even, like, in her mom's journal, she's just like, oh, she has somehow gained a body now. But no one ever digs into that. I don't know if that's explained in the later games, but boy, do I really wish it was. So, yeah, overall, I really like Corpse Party, but it could definitely do with some fleshing out in some certain regards. Some of the stuff, like the characters, most of them are not seen on screen at a lot of times. Like, Morishige and Mayu are basically just relegated extras, for lack of a better word. Despite being part of the main cast, quote, quote, they are, uh, they are just basically extras. Mayu isn't seen outside the beginning aside from a couple scenes before her untimely death. And Morishige basically just acts super fucking creepy um, all throughout the rest of the game while he's inside of there. With no real character built on that. Basically just the others reacting to all of them for lack of a better word. But yeah, that's uh, that's really all there is to talk about. It's pretty simple and I really like it. But it does, like everything else, it's not perfect. But I don't think as long as you're not a super hardcore perfectionist about like shit it won't be too bad and it's still a really good game and with that that's all there is to say so until next time i'll catch you all later Asta.